All right, all right. So it's a it's a fantastic episode. But before we dive into the 2023 projections, uh, we're going to start off with our, as always, our MLB Minute segment. And for those of you who um, are new, if you're just joining us, first of all, welcome. Click that subscribe button and get notifications for all of our future episodes. Uh, but welcome. In case you've missed it, the MLB Minute is a segment where the three of us take a turn going around the horn and we just talk about a, a specific topic in the world of baseball. So it's a little bit of a, a warm up, if you will, talking about Major League Baseball before we dive into our Blue Jays. And this week, given that spring, oh, I guess my time's up already. I got the ding. <laughs> um, no, this week we've uh, we've decided since spring training is just about to start, everybody's kind of trickling in, as they say. Uh, we're going to take a look at maybe the off season ending ish. There may be some some moves to come, but pretty much the big heavy lifting, as they say, is over. Uh, that's a, an Atkins ism for you, Steve. You're welcome. The heavy lifting is uh, <laughs> is done. Um, but anyway, we're going to the, the MLB question for us is aside from your Toronto Blue Jays, obviously they've had the best offseason. Obviously they are going to win the World Series. Obviously they are the greatest team to ever uh, grace a baseball field or fake baseball field. Um, but aside from the Toronto Blue Jays, who has had the best offseason? We've seen a lot of money spent, we've seen some big trades made. But who has had the best off season? There are a lot of options, and each of us will choose one and um, defend it. So, other than <laughs> other than the um, Toronto Blue Jays, Steve, who has had the best off season? Your time starts now. Well, you know, we're going to put aside the Blue Jays having the best offseason. We're going to save that for the fake news segment later on. But for me, it's, it's if you just go down US-19 a couple of miles, it's the Philadelphia Phillies. They got rid of a bunch of dead wood and bad contracts, either by non-tendering or releasing or getting other teams you know, to get suckered into trade. They expanded and lengthened their bullpen by adding Greg Kimbrell and Matt Strom and Gregory Soto. They signed Trey Turner, so now up the middle, they are a World Series class team because you've got Trey Turner. You're sliding Bryson Stott over to second, plus you have Josh Harrison, Real, Real Mutual behind the plate, and you've got Brandon Marsh in center. But they also found ways to find roles for players while their star player, Bryce Parper, is out probably till the All Star break. More importantly, they were aggressive. They didn't worry about, oh, my God, I don't know whether they're going to accept our offer or make excuses. They were aggressive. They absolutely aggressive. were. Aggressive. Be, be aggressive. <laughs> if you whip out the pom-poms, we're over. <laughs> no, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> I've got Steve speechless already. This is great. All right, Karen. Um Steve made a lot of good arguments, but you're going in a different direction. The second best offseason. <laughs> Karen, your time starts now. Or, or possibly the best. We'll see. Um, yeah, I'm going with the New York Mets. So Steve Cohen and his deep pockets. It, it sounds like they're they're going to have a, a luxury tax tier that is all his. <laughs> but, I mean, he's, he's not messing around when he wants to make – the Mets as good as they can be. So they, he re-signed Brandon Nimmo. He re-signed Edwin Diaz. He went all all in and got Justin Verlander and Kodai Senga. And who else did they get? Ho Jose Quintana, I think, and like David Robertson. The list goes on. Even when they ultimately lost out on Carlos Correa, and, and what a crazy story that was. I mean, they still had a phenomenal off season, and that's adding to a pretty talented team already. And they lost some players that went to other teams, but they just they they seem to have seamlessly replaced those that they lost. So I I like the Mets. I think they're in for a good uh, a good season coming up. Yeah, they're going to be tough, 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 tough. But money doesn't solve all the world's problems. All right. So my turn. The best off season 
second best offseason belongs to the San Diego Padres. Xander Bogarts might just single-handedly win them a championship. Not by himself, but the move, I mean. They, they, by adding Xander Bogarts, they've made themselves that much more of a complete team. Um, they've locked up Yu Darvish for uh, the next six years. He'll be uh, an age of 70, I believe, when his contract is over, um, which is great for him, you know. Uh, but in all seriousness, the San Diego Padres, um, while the Mets made splash after splash and threw money around, the San Diego Padres um, absolutely, I think, went toe-to-toe with them. They didn't have as much work to do, I don't think. Um, but their moves to, like... And it, I think it even started last year, again, getting rid of Eric Hosmer and, and all of that. Um, but I think the just that one move alone, um, adding Xander Bogarts, the real key, the real key, and, and this is what will be put them into the top spot in the offseason is if they can get Fernando Tastis and his head screwed on right. 